we're back with Peter Sherman, former MPP, former radio guy, and now he's a social commentator. He's also an author, Millennials, Boomer Bust. That's your re recent uh, you know, tome yes. of observations. Or how Gen Y will save the world. That's the Well, there's an article in the New York Times on Sunday. They're talking about the lack of reflection. Everybody just shoots out messages, 140 characters, and they don't think. And once it's out there, you don't think. So they're saying we're having a generation growing up which really, to, in their words, thoughtless. That's baloney. Okay. As a matter of fact, looking I at, thought I uh, want to start you off. Looking at Facebook uh, as an example, and, and I have tons of friends on Facebook, and believe me, most of my friends are not millennials. Mm -hmm. They're the guys who become the key, the keyboard road warriors. They're the guys who shoot out an opinion just because they own a keyboard and a screen and think that their opinion's worthy of, uh, of sharing. Has that's, opinion. that's bogus. What's bogus? The fact that What's those opinions bogus is are going a, out there? Oh, uh, to have an opinion, as I needn't tell a guy like Stephen LeGrew, you have to actually consider it before you just shoot it out there. And I don't think that's what millennials are doing at all. So tell me what they're doing then. I think millennials are, are uh, hooked to cell phones or smartphones. just because they were born into a generation and they're using them for absolutely everything as a remote control for their lives. They're using Is them to... Is that positive? Is that good? I think it's very positive. I think that they're looking for communication. Gallup just put out a monster poll on millennials particularly uh, that talks about where millennials get their news. 71% get it through the smartphone on the internet uh, as compared to say 15% for TV and 11% for radio and only 3% for newspapers. There was a survey out the other day. TV consumption is still as high as it ever was. I wouldn't it's argue with up. that. I wouldn't argue with that. I'm simply saying that millennials, which is a subset and a large subset, right. the largest of our society, mm -hmm. is looking to the internet for everything. So when they shop, they're shopping on their phones. If they're shopping, they're not brand shopping. They're talking to their contemporaries. And so they have no brand loyalty? They have no brand loyalty to, pe to speak of. And when they talk to the boss, they want constant feedback, 724. So let's talk about the shopping again, though. I mean, there was a talk, this is ages ago, when Shopping malls came out. They said, well, stores along the streets, a thing of the past, because everybody's going to go to shopping malls. That didn't work. You still have Blur and Young, all these shops everywhere around the world. Mm -hmm. Are people ordering online? Does that mean that these shops are going to be increasingly at risk? Some of them, uh, and we've seen it with big box stores. Uh, I, I would cite Target in Canada, but there are many, many other examples across the states. What wonders about the survivability uh, in a world where uh, there's a new verb called showrooming. So people decide they want to buy a new uh, flat screen television, they go to Best Buy, they take a look, then they go back home and they sit online and find the best price on that particular television set, and where does Best Buy go in terms of profit? So Peter Sherman, what is your what is your uh, your prognosis? Is this a generation that is uh, going to heck in a handbasket? I think this generation is going to do very well, and the reason that I, I uh, put a subtitle in there on how Gen Y will save the world, they have to. Yeah. They have to because it's about them. My generation started around Woodstock, so we've had our 50 years, and if you think we've made a mess, well, maybe we have, but regardless of whether we have or not, they're now starting their 50 years, and it's up to us to do the, the generational transfer, pass on the experience and help them because they're going to be in charge. Which is what you're doing with this book. Absolutely. There you are. Kim Crater, former MPP. You sat in the legislature with him. He was kicked out of caucus by the, by the Premier. Yes, I've heard. Some are saying that he's kicked out because of some sexual picadillos. I've heard What's that too. But story? I've heard that too, and I know Kim Crater, but I don't have an inside story. Um, I know that he has said publicly that it relates to that, and that he's not guilty of anything. But beyond that, I can't help you. Well, that's a good way to end it, Peter Sherman. Honesty, as all. Always, what we expect. <laughs>